Okay, so this video is going to be a how-to on how to do ionic and net ionic equations. So this is just a quick guideline on what you need to know as far as doing one. So the first thing is you need to know your charges for your ions and polyatomic ions. And you'll learn this from the periodic table, the different trends. So for instance, group one has a positive one charge. Group two has a positive two charge and so on and so forth. Uh, so you'll just learn this from the periodic table using that. Secondly, you need to study and master the solubility table. There's pre pretty much no other way around it. Um, there are videos on YouTube that can help, but this is just something you need to sit down, you need to practice, and with time you will get it. And generally, on most exams, they'll give you something that's popular, you know, a popular polyatomic or something. So over time, you'll see kind of the same things repeating itself, so you'll learn it that way. Um, but again, there's really no shortcut on how to learn this table. You just need to really sit and, and study it, you know, make flashcards if you have to. Um, so when you're actually performing the, the reaction, these are the different steps that you're going to take. So the first thing is you're going to group opposite charged ions together. And what I mean by that is, again, you're going to use your periodic table and knowing what is positive and negative, you'll be able to decipher uh, what ions will go with what ions, if that makes sense. So the next thing that you're going to do is balance your equation. Of course, you need to have the same amount on each side, so there definitely has to be balance, and that's one of the key mistakes that most students make they forget to balance and so everything throws them off so just make sure once you have your yield you balance everything everything on both sides has to be equal okay so the next thing is that you're going to decide what's uh, solid what's aqueous and so on and so forth and again, you're going to use the solubility table to determine this. Um, again, you just need to practice that. So the reaction that you get once all of these steps are done will be called your ionic equation. Once you have your ionic equation, you can then identify your spectator ions and cancel them out. And your spectator ions are just nothing more than the ions that don't really do anything in the reaction. They're just there spectating. They have no, no value in, in the overall reaction. Um, so once you cancel out your spectator ions, you'll be left with your net ionic equation. So I just have an example on how to do this and hopefully this helps. Okay, so here we have um, okay, so we have your lead ion, your nitrate polyatomic ion, your potassium ion, and your iodide ion. So the whole point of a net ionic equation is to determine what will happen when you put all these different ions together, what will the end results be? What will it, will it yield? Will it be precipitate or not. So that's basically what you want to determine. And as you can see here, for the lead ion, it has a plus two charge. And for your nitrate ion, polyatomic ion, it's negatively charged. Your potassium has a plus charge. There's a one here, but we don't like that. And then your iodine ion has a negative one charge but again we don't write that 
Okay. So what I meant by grouping your oppositely charged ions together is that basically your plus and your minus charged ions will go generally will be together. And the same here. So this is just a quick uh, guideline or idea that you should have in your head when performing these reactions. You know, you're not going to put this and this together or the nitrate and the iodine together. It has to be negatively charged or oppositely charged ions together. Okay. <clears throat> so, at this point, you're going to need to know your solubility table. And you're going to need to know what is soluble, insoluble, and so on and so forth. So based off of that, I can tell you that the P, B, and the iodide will be together, okay? Now, <clears throat> this has a 2 here, and this is going to be with an S, and this is precipitate, okay? Now you might ask, where is this 2 coming from? And that's just because your uh, lead ion has a positive 2. So when you put them together, they'll crisscross. And so that 2 then becomes part of this. Um, and since this one is negative, it has a negative 1 charge, this one, there's no charge at the bottom here. Okay, so then now this is gonna, this is what it's gonna yield. So now you have your 2k plus your 2NO3 negative. Okay, and so these are all, these are aqueous, and this one is aqueous. All right, uh, so this will be considered your ionic equation. And this is what this is what it gives you. When you put all of these things together, this is what it yields. So you have uh, lead iodide and then you have your potassium and you have your nitrate. All right. So then now at this point, you're going to, Cross over or cross out and and or identify and cancel out your spectator ion. Well, actually, before you do that, you need to balance. Um, and in this equation, everything seems to be balanced, so you just want to double check. So okay, so here you have one uh, potassium, sorry, one lead ion, you have one lead ion there, uh, you have two iodides, you have two iodides here, okay, then you have two nitrate ions here, and two nitrate ions there, and you have two potassium ions here, and two potassium ions there, so it seems that this equation is balanced. Sometimes you'll have a balance equation, and sometimes you will not. So just make sure that you're balancing it before you move on to anything else. Okay? So now, again, so at this point, you can identify and cancel out your spectator ion. Now, how you do that is, well, based on the solubility table, you know that when these two come together, there will be a precipitate. Right, so that's your lead and your iodide. There's a precipitate. So this you cannot touch. This these two are together. You can't break this down. You know, according to this reaction, you can't. There's nothing you can do with this. So, uh, at this point, all the things that are aqueous, that, you know didn't form anything, didn't form a precipitate, those are going to be the things that you can cancel out. 
So in this example here, you have your potassium and you have your nitrate. So then these are going to be considered your spectator ions. So you can cross that, nit that potassium out and cross this potassium out. You can cross this nitrate ion out and cross this nitrate ion out because it didn't form anything. It did not do anything for your reaction. It did absolutely nothing. They were just there spectating. That's why they call spectator ion. So then now, once you've canceled everything, you'll rewrite or just clean up your reaction. So you have P B two plus aqueous plus you have the two iodide negative aqueous and remember this yields a precipitate so you have your oh sorry this is a two you have your lead iodide precipitate with an S. These are aqueous. This is with an S. With your precipitate. So then at this point, this is called your net ionic equation. So it's pretty much simple as that. This first equation is going to be called your ionic and then the ions that didn't play a role in your overall equation, those are going to be called your spectator ions. So in this case, you have the 2NO3, and it was 2K. So these are your spectator ions. Okay, so hopefully this helps and it's a little bit clear on what you need to do. Um, so, yeah, if you have any questions, just let me know.